Welcome to the First Baptist Litchfield YouTube page. We're glad that you've clicked play to view one of our sermons. On behalf of our church family, we want to invite you to join us on Sundays at 8.45 a.m. for Sunday school, 10 a.m. for worship, and Wednesday nights during the school year for discipleship classes for all age groups. If you're in need of prayer, we would like to pray for you, so please contact us via email at prayer at fbclitchfield.com. Learn more about us at fbclitchfield.com, and for now, enjoy a video from our recent worship service. Little Johnny, little Johnny was talking to the little girl next door, next door neighbor, and He said to her, I, I wonder what my mom would like for Mother's Day. And the little girl answered, well, you could promise to keep your room clean. You could go to bed as soon as you're told. You could brush your teeth before bed, and you could quit fighting with your little sister. And little Johnny looked at her puzzled and said, no, I mean something practical. Well, I want to share with you one letter from a mother to her son in college. And this mother was a country lady. She was not very well educated, but she loved her son so very much. And she wrote these words. Dear son, just a few lines to let you know I'm still alive. I'm writing this letter slowly because I know you can't read very fast. You won't know the house when you come home. We've moved. About your father, he has a new job. He has 500 men under him. He's cutting the grass at the cemetery. I discovered what I thought was a washing machine in our new house, but it doesn't work too well. Last week, I stuffed three shirts into it, pushed the lever down, and I haven't seen the shirt since. Your sister, Mary, she had a baby this morning. I haven't found out with, whether it's a boy or a girl, so I don't know whether you're an aunt or an uncle. It rained only twice last week, first for three days and then for four days. Monday, it was so windy that one of the chickens laid the same egg four times. We got a letter yesterday from The Undertaker. He said, if the last installment isn't paid on your grandmother within seven days, up she comes. Signed, your loving mother. And P.S., I was going to send you $50, but I already sealed the envelope. <laughs> well, it really is true that there's nobody like mother. Now, children are sweet, dads are super, and moms, they're just plain old special. Uh, father may be the head of the home, the children may be the hub of the home, but without question, the mother is the heart of the home. Maybe with all of this in mind, we can better understand the request of one mother, Mrs. Zebedee. Mrs. Zebedee, you see, Mrs. Zebedee was the mother of James and John. And I want us to take a look at the request she had of Jesus. We find this request in Matthew chapter 20. If you have your Bibles, turn with me to Mas Matthew chapter 20. We're in the second Sunday of our series, A Godly Family. We're going to be looking at the family over the next several weeks, looking at principles that hold our families together. And so let's look at Matthew chapter 20, and let's look at mom, the heart of a godly family. If you would, let's stand in the honor of the reading of God's Word, and we'll look at Matthew chapter 20, verses 20 through 23. This is the request of Mrs. Zebedee. Then the mother of Zebedee's sons came to Jesus with her sons, 
and kneeling down, ask a favor of him. What is it you want, he asked. She said, grant that one of these two sons of mine may sit at your right and the other at your left in your kingdom. You don't know what you're asking, Jesus said to them. Can you drink the cup I'm going to drink? We can, they answered. And Jesus said to them, you will indeed drink from my cup. But to sit at my right or my left is not for me to grant. These places belong to those from whom they have been prepared by my Father. May God add his richest blessings to the reading of his word. You may be seated. As we look at this passage of Scripture, many people, including biblical scholars, have criticized this mother. They've criticized her for what she asked. Some have said that it was a worldly request, that she was overly ambitious for these boys, that it was selfish that she would want a a better position for her sons. But let's back up just a little bit and let us ask what mother, or for that matter, what parent wouldn't want the best for their children? Mothers do look out for their children. They are quick to defend them, help them, encourage them, and sometimes even ask on their behalf. We also need to recognize that when this mother came to Jesus, when she came to Jesus and she made this request, while Jesus did not grant the request, neither did he deny it either. He simply reminded her of the cost of being seated on the right or the left, and then told her that it is the Father who determines who will be seated there. So since today is Mother's Day, I want us to consider three positive things about the request of this special mom. Number one, this mom had heavenly aspirations. She had heavenly aspirations for her children. Mrs. Zebedee came to Jesus falling on her knees, praying that her boys might be part of the kingdom of God. I can think, listen, I can think of no more important task of motherhood than that, to seek to ensure that your children are saved, that they're part of the kingdom of God. G. Campbell Morgan was a famous preacher. He had four sons, and each of those sons became preachers themselves. And one day when all the family was present, someone asked one of the sons, who is the greatest preacher in your family? Thinking that the son would would answer, well, my father is the greatest preacher in our family. And the son had a great admiration for his father. And as he looked straight across the room out at, at him, without hesitation, he answered the question, well, my mother is the greatest preacher in our family. Now, I don't know about you, but I had a preaching mother. Sometimes moms preach and they pray out of necessity. Sometimes they preach and they pray because motherhood is not easy. It is extremely difficult. Sometimes it is filled with joy and sometimes it is filled with sadness. Sometimes your children make you so proud you want to pop your buttons. And at other times you can't find enough handkerchiefs to dry your tears. I can understand the feelings of the mother with five children who was asked, if you had it to do all over again, would you have children? Yes, she replied, but not the same ones. (laughs) Being a parent 
being a parent is difficult. But Mrs. Zebedee gives us a valuable example. For she prayed earnestly that her boys would be part of the kingdom of God. We need that same concern for our children. We need to be praying that our children will become part of the kingdom of God. A man was watching his two small children so his wife could get out of the house for the day. And the man's infant daughter was lying on the couch and, and his oldest son was sitting next to her. And the dad went to the kitchen for, for a second and told his son, watch your sister. And he'd not been gone more than 20 seconds when he heard a thump. And then he heard his daughter starting to cry. He ran back into the living room to see his daughter had rode off the couch and rode onto the floor. And his son was sitting on the couch just watching her. And as he picked up his daughter and he scolded his son, he said, I thought I told you to watch your sister. The boy replied, I did. I watched her roll off the couch on the floor. Well, at least he followed directions, didn't he? He followed directions. Direction is important. It's an important gift that a mother can give her children. Moms, you can give your children direction. What good is it? What good have we done in teaching our children how to be successful in life if we have neglected their spiritual direction? What good is it if our children are successful at playing sports? What good is it if our children make money and live in nice neighborhoods, but they don't know Jesus? I hope that at the heart of every mother and father here this morning, that there is a burden. I hope and pray this, that there is a burden for you to go to the throne of God and pray that your children will be saved. Heavenly aspirations. But number two, this mom had worthy inspirations. She had worthy inspirations for her children. Not only did Mrs. Zebedee pray that her children would be part of the kingdom, but she prayed that they would be actively involved in the worthy work of the kingdom. You know, it's not enough just to be saved. It's not enough just for you to be saved, and it's not enough just for your children to be saved. We must be inspired to serve, not just aspired to heaven. We must be inspired to serve. There are churches today full of people content just to fill a seat, or fill a pew. There are plenty of people willing to sit back and receive the blessings, but seldom do they get involved in doing any kind of real work in the church. But where, folks, where does the spirit of service begin? It begins at home. It begins at home with mothers and fathers setting the example as teachers and leaders and workers in the life of the church. Setting the example, discipling others, helping others, loving others. Moms, dads, as you demonstrate your faith consistently by reading the Bible to your children, by praying with your children, by attending worship with your children, by bringing your children to programming here at church that help them grow spiritually, and by participating in the life and mission of the church, you will send a strong message to your children. I heard recently about a pastor who had a conversation with a new church member 
uh, about serving and working in the life of the church. And, and when he was done, the young man said he was ready to join in and help. I'm, I'm ready, pastor. And the pastor was curious. So he asked him, well, what did I say? What, what did I say that convinced you to step up and help? And the young man answered, it was nothing you said. It was the way my mother lived. Mrs. Zebedee prayed that her children would be actively involved in the work of God's kingdom. Don't sell yourself short. And don't sell your kids short. And don't sell the kids of First Baptist Church short. They are not the future of the church. They are the church. They have reason and the ability to lead as they've done this morning in worship. They have the opportunity to be amazing kingdom contributors. But there's a third thing. This mom had lofty expectations. She had lofty expectations of her children. Mrs. Zebedee had big dreams for her kids. Why can't we? Why can't we have big dreams for our kids? Notice that she didn't pray that her children would be doorkeepers in heaven. And she wanted them on the right and the left hand of Jesus. No small dreams here. You may consider Mrs. Zebedee brash and presumptuous, but I admire her boldness. Too often, I think, folks, listen, too often we have settled for mediocrity in the home. We've settled for mediocrity in the home for far, far too long. We've been content with just barely making it through the door. It's time to take our positions on the right and left of our children. It's time to take our positions on the right and left hand, molding and fashioning our children to become men and women of God. Moms, don't be afraid to pray for big things for your children. If those things are worthy, if they're honorable, and if they're godly things. I heard about a school teacher who brought a magnet to class. And she taught about how the magnet works and how it picks up things. And she lectured on the properties of magnets. And the next day, she gave her students a pop quiz. And one of the questions referring to magnets was, my name has six letters. The first letter is an M, and I pick things up. What am I? 50% of the class said mother. Oh, listen, one of the greatest things that a mom picks up is her children. And it's never noticed more than when she picks them up by praying with them and for them. Maybe this mom, Mrs. Zebedee, maybe she just wanted her boys to be close to Jesus. Maybe she just wanted them to be close to Jesus. Isn't that what every Christian mom really wants for their children? Every Christian mom wants you to be close to Jesus. I want you to remember something every time you pick up a bottle of Heinz 57 ketchup. What, Pastor Doug? Yeah, every time you pick up a bottle of Heinz 57 ketchup, I want you to remember something. When the will of Henry J. Heinz was read, it contained the following confession. These words. I desire to set forth at the very beginning of this will as the most important item in it, a confession of my faith, in Jesus Christ as my Savior. I also desire to bear witness to the fact that throughout my life, in which there have been both joys and sorrows, I have been wonderfully sustained by my faith in God through Jesus Christ. This legacy 
was left to me by my consecrated mother, a woman of strong faith, and to it I attribute any success I have attained. I am a Heinz 57 child. I'm a Heinz 57 boy. I'm a Heinz 57 son. My mother set that example for me. And any success is attributed to her. I am blessed. And I am grateful to be a Heinz 57 man. Moms, what sort of legacy will you pass down to your children? I propose that a godly mother prepares her children for this life and for the next. I suppose there's a reason why today is so special. It is because we recognize that a mother's love is probably the closest example we have to God's love. Mom, you truly are the heart of the home. Let's pray together. Thank you again for joining us. Please follow us on Facebook and join us for an upcoming worship service. We are located at 106 East Walnut in Litchfield, Kentucky.